Hello everybody and welcome to our fall adventures with Sunshine Storytime. Um, we kind of got did things a little bit different this week. We did not have our Bible time because of our Thanksgiving holiday. And Wednesday we aired our Thanksgiving adventures and today we're going to air our fall adventures because we are in the season of fall and um, I want to make sure that we we kind of um, go on some fall adventures to to represent that and um, just learn a little bit about fall okay all right so I'm still where I don't have all of my things so we're going to begin with prayer we can do that we just won't do our pledges this time okay all right so you ready? Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Can we pray? Can we pray? Let's do that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be there thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. All right, you see my hat today? Mm, pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. You like pumpkin pie? Well, I didn't like pumpkin pie until I just made a new one this week and I kind of liked it. I liked it a little bit different. So um, I've got my pumpkin pie hat on because this is the season of fall and Fall is pumpkin everything. That's the time where where you hear just pumpkin this and pumpkin that and pumpkin this and pumpkin that and woo, all the pumpkins. <laughs> all right, so let's start out with adventures. Oh my goodness. Our song. Where are what am I thinking? Here we go. Story time, story time. Are you ready for story time? Let's take an adventure, let's take a trip. Let's grab a book and zip it easy. Let's take an adventure, let's take a trip. During our story time. Yes, we're going to start out today with um, an adventure to see the Berenstain Bears. I love the Berenstain Bears. I learned so much from them. And I, I love their manners. I love the way that they love one another and they help one another and they're so kind. And that's what they teach. And I just, I love the Berenstain Bears. So this is the Berenstain Bears and the prize pumpkin. I told you, pumpkin everything in the fall. Pumpkin everything. Here we go. This is by Stan and Jan Berenstain. Pumpkins are just like everything else in nature. There's my light again, <laughs> said Papa Bear, as he and the cubs finished weeding the pumpkin patch. No two of them are exactly alike. That's for sure, agreed Brother Bear. Look at that funny flat one and that lumpy one over there. Then there was the giant, which is what Papa had named one that just seemed to be getting bigger and bigger. Why is it that no two things are exactly alike? Asked Sister Bear. It's just the way nature is, answered Papa. Time to wash up for supper, called Mama Bear from the tree house steps. Look at those pumpkins. But Papa Bear is right. You get two pumpkins and they're not the same. They're all different. What about Queenie McBear's twin brothers, asked Sister. They certainly look a lot alike, said Papa, but I've noticed that Mrs. McBear can tell them apart quite easily. In you go, said Mama, shooing her family into the house. But Sister didn't go right in. She stood on the stoop for a moment and looked out over bear country. Wonder what Sister's thinking about. It was well into fall, so the days were getting shorter. Pretty soon, the bears would start thinking about Christmas, but right now, bear country was aglow in the setting sun. Farmer Ben's well-kept farm looked especially fine with its baled hay, corn shocks, and pumpkins casting long shadows. I guess nature's pretty amazing, Sister said, as she looked out over the beautiful scene. It's the most amazing thing there is, said Mama. Come on now, in you go. Ooh. 
Farmer Ben's farm sure looks beautiful in the setting sun, said Sister as the family sat down to supper. Hmm, said Papa grumpily. Farmer Ben's not such a much. Not such a much? asked Mama. Why, Ben is the finest farmer in bear country, and besides, he's one of your best friends. That may be so, said Papa, but earlier today he came by and said, Nice little pumpkin patch you've got there, Papa. What he said is true, said Mama, especially compared to his fields and fields of pumpkins. That may be so, too, grumped Papa, but I didn't like the way he said it. He sort of chuckled. My patch may be small, but the giant is big. It may be the biggest and best pumpkin in all bear country. What do you think about that? Oh. Papa Bear is grumpy tonight. While they're eating supper, he's grumpy. I think you're being oversensitive, said Mama. Come, let's clear the table so the cubs can do their homework. Brother and sister sighed as they spread their books out on the table. What's that all about? asked Papa. Oh, I was just thinking, said Brother. Christmas almost two months away. There's nothing to look forward to. That's right, added sister. Nothing except lots of homework. Oh, is that so, protested Mama Bear. It just so happens that there's something very important to look forward to. A very special holiday called Thanksgiving. That's when we give thanks for all the wonderful. Your mama's absolutely right, interrupted Papa. He pointed to a notice in the evening paper. It said, don't forget this year's Thanksgiving festival. Entry blanks for the big pumpkin contest available at City Hall. Thanksgiving's a very important holiday, especially this year because we're going to enter the giant in the pumpkin contest and beat the pants off Farmer Ben. But Papa, he's a professional, said Brother. He's won the contest 10 years in a row. All the more reason to teach him a lesson. Come on, let's go out and check up on the next heavyweight pumpkin champion of bear country, he said. Oh, poor Papa. Poor Papa Bear. <laughs> now it was Mama Bear's turn to sigh. Thanksgiving was about giving thanks, not beating the pants off Farmer Ben. Isn't it a beauty? Papa said after they admired the giant. Across the road, they could see a field of Ben's pumpkins. There were lots of fine ones, but none that measured up to the giant. There's homework to be done, called Mama Bear from the house. As they left, the cubs asked Papa, aren't you coming in? Nope, he said. I'm going to stay out here a little while and watch the giant grow. And grow it did. It grew bigger, rounder and oranger every day. When Papa and the Cubs went to City Hall to get an entry blank for the contest, they saw the place where the winning pumpkin would go on display. We can't lose, said Papa. In their mind's eye, they could see their pumpkin in the place of honor. Mama tried to remind them what Thanksgiving was really about, but every time she did, Papa would interrupt. You'll have to excuse me, my dear, he'd say. It's time to water the giant. He not only watered it on a regular schedule and gave it special plant food, but he also covered it with a blanket at night and tucked it in against the cold. He's really taking care of that pumpkin. One afternoon, the cubs got off the school bus with something important to tell Papa, but they were stopped in their tracks by what they saw. He was talking to the giant. Mama explained that Papa had bought a book from the swindler, Raffish Ralph, about how to encourage your plants to grow by talking to them. Well, said Brother, I don't suppose it can do any harm. It sure could, it sure could harm his reputation, said Sister, if anybody saw him talking to a pumpkin. Uh, Papa, Brother said. A cub at school told me he went on a class trip to Ben's farm and saw some pretty big pumpkins, especially one really big one that Ben calls the monster. We've got to get a look at it, said Papa.
<laughs> that evening, Papa and the clubs climbed through the fence into Farmer Ben's field. They saw some good-sized pumpkins, but none to match the giant. Maybe it's behind the barn, whispered Papa. Suddenly, a light shone on them, and they heard Ben shout, Prowlers in the pumpkin field! Get me my pitchfork! They got out of there so fast, Papa tore his overalls climbing through the fence. What have you been up to? asked Mama Bear when they got home. Nothing much, said Papa, just strolling in the moonlight. Oh, my goodness. Papa Bear's getting ready to get in trouble, y'all. He's getting in trouble. The weekend before Thanksgiving arrived, and it was time for the big festival. The Bear family got there just in time. The pumpkin judging was about to begin. There were many fine pumpkins in the contest, but Papa was sure that none could measure up to the giant until he saw the monster. It was at least as big and round and orange as his pumpkin, and maybe, just maybe, a little bigger, rounder, and oranger. Oh, oh. all right, so let's see. Here's the giant. There's the monster. What do you think? Yeah, I think the monster is bigger and rounder and oranger. The bears waited nervously while the judges studied, measured, and weighed, and then studied, measured, and weighed, uh, weighed some more. Finally, they made their announcement. The first prize winner and still champion. Of course, that meant Farmer Ben had won. It was close. It turned out that Ben's monster was just a little bigger, rounder, and oranger than Papa's giant. But that wasn't the worst of it. The giant didn't even come in second. A beautiful pumpkin grown by Ms. McGriz won second prize. The giant came in third. Papa and the cubs were crushed crushed and very quiet as they pushed their third prize winner home. It wasn't until they reached the crest of a hill that overlooked bear country that Mama decided to have her say, I know you're disappointed, but third prize is nothing to be ashamed of. Besides, Thanksgiving isn't about contests and prizes. It's about giving thanks. And it seems to me that we have a lot to be thankful for. Perhaps it was Mama's lecture, or maybe it was how beautiful Bear Country looked in the sunset's rosy glow. But whatever the reason, Papa and the Cubs began to understand what Mama was talking about. Even more so on Thanksgiving Day, after the Bears gave thanks for the wonderful meal they were about to enjoy, Sister Bear gave her own special thanks. I'm thankful, she said, that we didn't win first prize. If we had, the giant would be on display in front of City Hall instead of being part of the yummy pies we're going to have for dessert. Pumpkin pies. <laughs> As the laughter faded and the bears thought about the blessings of family, home, friends, and neighbors, they knew deep in their hearts there was no question about it. Indeed, they did have a great deal to be thankful for. Yesterday was Thanksgiving Day. And like we talked about a couple of days ago, Thanksgiving is about giving thanks for all of the blessings the Lord has given to you, your friends, your family, your home, um, your your parents' job, your health, your toys, your your food and your clothes. Um, there's just so much that we can give the Lord thanks for, and we can be thankful for one another. Um, but we should do that every day of the year, not just on Thanksgiving. All right, here's another, another adventure, the pokey little pumpkin. Nope. Let me try that again. <laughs> the pokey little puppy and the pumpkin patch by Diane Muldrow illustrated by Sue DeSico. I hope I have that right. If not, I apologize. The pokey little puppy and the pumpkin patch. One crisp fall morning, five little puppies went for a walk. 
through the meadow they went, over the bridge and across the green grass, one right after the other. Along the way, they saw trees full of red, orange, and yellow autumn leaves. See, this is what fall looks like. This is when the trees begin to turn, um, the, the leaves on the trees begin to turn colors. And you will see beautiful colors, yellow and red and orange. Sometimes you'll see um, purple. I have seen some purple looking leaves. It's, it's really, fall is not my favorite season. My favorite season is summer. But I will say that the way that the trees and the leaves change their colors, it is really, really beautiful. But when they got to the top of the hill, they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. One little puppy wasn't there. Where in the world is that pokey little puppy, they wondered. When they looked down at the bottom of the hill, there he was, looking at something over on the next hill. I see something, he called. A bright red tractor pulling a wagon. The other puppy saw it too. Over the hills they ran as fast as they could go. It's a hayride, cried the puppies. Hop aboard, said the farmer. I'm going to visit the pumpkin patch. So hay rides, that's something that a lot of people do in the fall. They'll get in the back of a truck or a, or a wagon or a trailer full of hay. They'll sit on top and they'll just go riding. It's fun. And a lot of times they'll take you through the pumpkin patch to pick a pumpkin. So the five little puppies jumped into the wagon and went for a ride. What fun! The air was cool and the sun was warm. They bumped along past a cornfield and an apple orchard. They stopped at a field with lots and lots of, what do you think, what do you think, what do you think? Pumpkins! <laughs> they may each choose a pumpkin to take home, said the farmer. But which pumpkin? The puppies wondered. There were so many. Suddenly, one of the puppies cried, let's roll in the hay. Oh, that sounds like fun. Rolling in the hay. So the puppies jumped, roly-poly, pale-mail into soft piles of hay. Soon they were playing hide and seek. Then they counted themselves. One, two, three, four. Where in the world was the pokey little puppy? That pokey little puppy's always getting lost and left behind. He had found a corn maze. So the puppies trotted through the maze as fast as they could, heading this way and that way. This is another thing that people do in the fall. They'll go through um, corn mazes. So when the corn is really, really tall. And so they have to kind of look and figure out which way do we go? Which way do we go to get out? until they made it out the other side. One, two, three, four. Where was that pokey little puppy now? There he was sniffing the air. I smell something, said Pokey. The four little puppies began to sniff and they smelled it too. Apple cider, they cried. Oh my goodness, I haven't had apple cider in years in years but that's really popular in the fall season it's really warm it tastes like apple and cinnamon and it really warms you up on the inside the puppies soon found apple cider donuts to eat and warm apple cider to drink they ate as much as they could and then ran back to the pumpkin patch one right after the other the puppies picked one two three four five pumpkins all by themselves <laughs> how fun and home they went as fast as they could go to carve their pumpkins after dinner when the sun went down the puppies enjoyed their glowing jack-o-lanterns while they ate pumpkin pie for dessert there you go again pumpkin pie pumpkin pie the puppies were tired but the pokey little puppy was the last to fall asleep because he couldn't Stop thinking about the fun he'd had on their wonderful pumpkin picking autumn day. There he is with his pumpkin. I like to pick pumpkins. Um, I haven't done that in a while, but I like to pick pumpkins. Um, and this this year with my with my students um, is the first time 
that I had ever done it, but um, we we actually we we didn't carve. I, I don't carve my pumpkins, um, but we dug out the insides and we used that to make the pumpkin pies, and that was a lot of fun. A lot, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, there's so many things that you can do in in the fall that you can't do other times of the year, and the, and so those were some of the things that are special to the fall. Um, the hay rides and the corn mazes and apple cider and pumpkins and pumpkin pies and that kind of thing. And that's just really, really fun. Um, fall also brings with it some, a little bit of cold. Okay, it gets a little colder. You may start wearing jackets or ooh, like the last few days wearing like heavy coats because it's been really cold. But, um, but, you know, that is part of the fall season too. It's the part that Miss Lynn does not like. <laughs> I do not like it at all. No, I don't. <laughs> but um, but every season is important and every season does have their own fun, unique um, things about it. So those are just a few of of what we can do in the fall. All right. Another adventure. Peppa. Peppa Pig. Peppa's Pumpkin Day. Peppa's Pumpkin. This is by Courtney Carbone, illustrated by Zoe Waring. Autumn has arrived. Peppa, George, and their classmates are excited to go pumpkin picking at the farm. Everyone will be able to choose their very own pumpkin, Madam Gazelle says. Hooray, Peppa cheers. I will find the best pumpkin of all. Not if I find it first, said Mandy Mouse. Oh, they're going to see the pumpkin patch, too. At the farm, there were so many things to see and do. Welcome to the farm, said Mrs. Badger. Next stop, the pumpkin patch. She leads the way to a cart pulled by a shiny red tractor. The children find seats atop big bales of hay. Away we go, Mrs. Badger calls. There we go. They're going to go on a hay ride, just like Pokey Little Puppy did. Mrs. Badger and the children sing songs as they make their way across the farm. Soon they arrive at the pumpkin patch. Peppa and Mandy Mouse giggle as they race to find the perfect pumpkin. Crunch, 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 red, yellow, and orange leaves crackle under Mandy's wheelchair and Peppa's feet. Yep, that's the thing. When the leaves start falling off the trees, that's the sound that it makes under your feet. Crunch, crunch, crunch. <laughs> there are as many different types of pumpkins as there are children in the class. Peppa finds a low, wide pumpkin. Mandy Mouse chooses a tall, skinny pumpkin. George looks high and low for a pumpkin shaped like his favorite animal. And again, no two pumpkins look the same. Dinosaur, George exclaims, pointing. Peppa sees he is pointing to a crate of strange looking objects. The one on top looks just like a dinosaur. George smiles proudly at his unique find. What funny pumpkins, Peppa exclaims. Those are actually not pumpkins, but gourds, explains Mrs. Badger. They look like snakes, tusks, horns, and even an old-fashioned mustache. That's right. So I'm going to see. I'll pull up here. So you see right here. Okay, these are gourds. They're not pumpkins. But you will see them in the grocery stores in the fall time, right along with the pumpkins, beside the pumpkins. All the children in the class have chosen a special pumpkin or gourd, but all that searching has made them hungry. Peppa, George, and their classmates share a picnic lunch in a nearby field. While they eat, they talk excitedly about what they found. That looks like fun picnic. Soon it's time to return home. Peppa can't wait to get back to her house and decorate her pumpkin. Mummy and Daddy Pig wave hello from the schoolyard. Can we decorate our pumpkin and gourd when we get home? Peppa asks. Of course, Daddy Pig replies. Some people do take their pumpkins and they, they decorate them. Some carve them, some draw on them, some paint them. Back at their house, Peppa draws a spooky face on her pumpkin with a black marker. George puts glitter and googly eyes on his gourd. Now it really looks like a dinosaur. Mummy carefully cuts off the top of Peppa's pumpkin and scoops out the insides. It leaves behind a stringy, squishy pile of mush. This is called pulp, Mummy explains. 
Squish, smush, squelch. The pulp is fun for Peppa and George to play with, but it is messy. It, it is messy and really squishy. Daddy Pig collects the pumpkin seeds. He arranges them on a baking sheet with a little butter and salt. He will roast them for a special treat. That's another thing that is popular in the fall time, roasting the pumpkin seeds. And we did that too. I'm not quite sure that I liked it, but at least I tried it. Mommy Pig carves the pumpkin and puts a little light inside. Now it's a jack-o'-lantern, she says, or a peppa lantern. Let's put it outside so everyone can see. Peppa cheers. Mummy Pig, Peppa, and George set up the pumpkin by their front door. It looks just a little bit spooky as it flickers and glows in the dark. Suddenly, Peppa smells something delicious. The pumpkin seeds are ready, Daddy Pig calls. Peppa and George can't wait to try a new special treat. Munch, munch, munch. Peppa and George help themselves to lots of yummy pumpkin seeds. Autumn is so much fun. Autumn is another word for fall. So we will say that this is the fall season or it's the autumn season. Okay. Oh, goodness. So there were even more fun things in the fall in that book that we can do. Um, so I love it. All right. We're at our last adventure, our last adventure for, for today. And this one goes back to being thankful. But you remember what I told you, be thankful every day of the year, not just on Thanksgiving, which was yesterday, but every day of the year. This is by Sona Lee Fry, illustrated by Alicia Garrisol, and it's just simply called, I am thankful. I'm thankful. Are you thankful? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I am thankful. Today we're talking about what we're thankful for. Are you ready? Let's begin. I am thankful for my mama's hugs, for crunchy leaves and ladybugs. I am thankful for my puppy's tricks, my comfy slippers, and my kitty cat's licks. I am thankful for my yummy lunch, a cheese sandwich and carrots to munch. There we go. I am thankful for my teacher's hi and for all her answers when I ask why. I am thankful for the bees that buzz, the apples we pick, and the dandelion fuzz. I am thankful for each autumn day and the pumpkin patches where I play. So much to be thankful for. Are you making your list in your mind of what you're thankful for? I am thankful for the birds that sing as I go up, up high on my swing. I am thankful for my grandma's pies, her cookies, and her sweet potato fries. Oh my goodness, I might have to go get me a snack. <laughs> I am thankful for my bedtime huddles, my favorite blanket, and daddy's cuddles. Now it's my turn. I am thankful for family far and near and for every person I see here. What are you thankful for? I am thankful for you. I'm thankful that you come and watch um, these episodes and you have these adventures with me and that we can laugh and have fun together. We can learn together too. I'm thankful for you. Story time, story time. We're all done with story time. We took an adventure, we took a trip. We grabbed a book, we zippity zipped. We took an adventure, we took a trip. During our story time. Yes, we did. And I had so much fun exploring and talking to you about the fall season. 
Now, join me back here next Wednesday for our Bible adventures again. And we're going to get back on our regular schedule. All right. All right. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. Stay thankful. Keep thanking the Lord for all that you have been blessed with. And I'll see you soon. Bye, friends.